at this time, I want to turn it over to AD. Yes, uh, <clears throat> good afternoon. Thanks everyone uh, for joining again today. Um, special thanks as always to, to you, Andrew, and to Margo for, um, for allowing SEMA to, to host uh, this webinar series, Thriving During and Post Pandemic. As well as want to thank our fearless leader, John Arday, for seeing the vision to, to allowing us to put this together as well. Um, this is our fourth um, webinar series. Um, first, we spoke on micro, Microsoft Office 365 and other resources. We talked about tools, tips, and tricks for uh, remote workers. And last week, we spoke on cybersecurity, was was really a, quite a big hit as well. So this week, uh, our final one is talking about ways and benefits of utilizing an IT MSP. Um, <clears throat> again, my name is A.D. Jenkins. I'm the sales manager here at SEMA uh, with many years of uh, IT experience. I'm a, a Navy vet as well, and uh, currently I'm the president of Irving ISD. Uh, just a little housekeeping here for you. Uh, can you, um, when you join, can you please keep your, your mics on mute? And please utilize the chat feature as much as you like. Uh, we have a fantastic uh, office manager and director of marketing, Ms. Michaela Davison, who's in the background. She's be answering all of your questions. So please utilize her. Um, and uh, like I said, I encourage you to to stay active with that because we will be answering questions also on the fly. <clears throat> so uh, the main thing is why we sort of put this together is it's really how at COVID-19 impacted us all. Personally, and uh, I'm a social person, like I've mentioned before, I love uh, getting together, I like shaking hands, embracing, I like going to parties, just any type of gatherings. And a good, uh, good example is just this weekend, Memorial Day, um, for the first time, I didn't go anywhere. I just wanted to just kind of stay in and because COVID-19 has impacted us, impacted us all like that. And, and what about on the business world, business side of things? It has been a major, major disruption uh, from your employees to affecting revenue. Um, and Unknown basically participant had to refine is now joining. Our business model uh, is effective how we communicate as well as collaborate. It's really been a transformation and we had to really adjust our strategies on, on the fly. So our thoughts were to were just to change uh, the way we're thinking and be more positive, to give you something that you can utilize and go forward with. So really just to give you a boost and um, and a resource that we feel that you can embrace and, and uh, this is SEMA way of uh, supporting you. So we created this series to speak on topics that we felt that can benefit you during and after this pandemic. And as I've always stated before and time and time again, we don't have the answers for everything, but we just wanted to share with you our expertise and things that we know. And because we know that you are experiencing a, a shift in your business. So and hopefully this can minimize, minimize any disruption that you have going on at this time. So if you don't mind, Alice, can you go to the next slide? OK, uh, about SEMA, um, we operate on two major pillars here, and one being uh, that we are value added reseller. And that's simply mean that we resell customized products and services to our end users, whether that's um, information technology, uh, providing additional hardware, installation services, consulting, troubleshooting. It can be other related products or services on top of those core products. So we were born out of the vision uh, to help business, businesses owners by reducing their costs of their technology infrastructure. So we have companies of all sizes uh, streamline the IT operations and improve their system availability. But what's really important to us here at SEMA is building relationships and not just regular relationship, trust is relationship that's sustainable and uh, establishing that rapport based on speed, integrity, and also uh, expertise. So some other things that we're gonna talk about today, um, 
is uh, an MSP, which is, you hear me say that, that's a managed service provider. We will talk about Alcema Care. Um, Unknown participant we will also is now exiting. Talk about selecting your MSP, things that you need to be aware of, things you should do and things that you should not do. And finally, we will allow some time for some Q&A. And I think this one, with, uh, we have a smaller audience, so hopefully this will be more of an intimate conversation to allow for others to, 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 to speak on it as also. Um, next slide. And this is a good time to, to talk about this particular slide here, So, it, which really uh, is a typical small business type setup. At top, you at the top you may have a CEO, which can be a president, uh, this decision make. Uh, it can be a decision maker or other partners as well. And under that, there's unknown uh, participant is now joining. Financial officer. Uh, you can have a sales officer. If you're in an enterprise business, you can have someone in operations, uh, research and development. There can be an HR department as well as a CIO. And under that. For example, under that chief financial officer one, it can be a comptroller that does the execution and reporting to them can be like uh, AP clerk. As far as a sales officer, um, under sales office can be a sales manager and reporting to them can be in, an inside or outside representative. So um, basically what I'm saying, all of those, all of those uh, different roles can, can really be several people's doing the same. So what do I want to focus on is to your far right, the CIO, which is your chief information officer. So, and that's where SEMA comes in at, because under that can be, you can have an IT director as well as some technicians that does all the heavy lifting. So we become, actually, we become uh, that, that portion of where we work with your IT department, we become that actual, we become your IT department, I should say. So all those other roles can go back to functioning and doing what they normally do so they can focus on where they are really in business. So, and I will be expanding on that a little bit more uh, as we uh, go through this presentation. Can you go to the next slide, please? Okay, we're gonna talk a little bit more about our MSP uh, here. Uh, next slide. Okay, IT management here, and there are four things that I'm just going to touch on real briefly, and that's beginning with uh, <clears throat> a strategy, and you must have a strategy in place. All good plans begin with a strategy, and that's aligning your IT strategy with your business strategy, so that can include forecasting, uh, budgeting, as well as planning. As far as a proactive service, um, you can that's basically the, exec, the execution of your IT strategy, whether that be the implementation of best strategies. It can involve uh, thorough documentation. You can uh, where you can avoid that reactive spiral of depth, I would say. So and the next one would be the reactive support and that would work. And that's really good in theory that that's a good support. But uh, without a primary focus, on your proactive services, you can't be affected with this approach. So that's something you have to sort of be aware of right there. And it's important to have really good response times or quick response time, to keep employees uh, productive. Um, and that can be with a ticketing system or documentation, knowledge sharing. So you can, when the same situations come up, you have some information to sort of uh, follow on. And lastly, there's a systems that you have in place and uh, systems help your business operate more efficiently. Uh, next slide. I'm going to right, right now, I'm just going to talk a little bit on um, the technical op support options that you have in place here. So if you don't have an IT manager that that's what they do, uh, manage your IT environment, you pr pretty much have three options here. Uh, one option is basically just don't do anything and we are we all know how that works out uh, there can be a lot of downtime when it comes to that loss of data and excessive spending on the IT support side there's your your do it yourself right there we've heard of that before and, and that can work for some time but if you're scaling up that's something that you want to 
considered mostly uh, your most technical savvy person uh, that can be anyone, that person really becomes your IT manager. So what happens with that really it just pulls you away, uh, pull them away from what their main job is. And lastly, there's the, there's outsourcing to where you, um, you give that support to a competent consultant. And, and that's what I'm speaking of an MSP. And when I say competent, I do remain competent, someone you can trust and reliable and, and sort of can help take your business to the next level. Next slide. So just this time, I just want to sort of bring up, it's more, but just some uh, misconceptions on that on the IT side that that would come up from time to time. So people would say, hey, my computer network doesn't need any regular monitoring or maintenance. And that's one of those, yeah, right. But uh, seriously, it's just like saying, hey, I've, I've, having, I've been driving without my seatbelt for five years. So that's one of those things that can, that can get you and haunt you really bad. So that's something to be aware of. Not <clears throat> seriously, I made a little fun out of this, but this does happen when someone says, hey, my next door neighbor, uncle, brother-in-law, nephew, cousin, uh, he knows this computer stuff well. I haven't, it hasn't been that lengthy, but I've actually been told something just like that. And, and I was quite shocked to, you can't fight it because if that's how they feel, that that's really how they feel that they have it under control. Uh, another one is just all computer technicians are created equal. The best option will be uh, basically going with the lowest price. Uh, I'm all about getting options. I'm all about talking to multiple uh, more, multiple MSPs out there, but just going with the lowest price, that's not always best anyway. And we know, we've heard the, the old saying, sometimes you get what you pay for. Plus one eight one seven and eight nine one seven one nine. Uh, and honest is now support exiting. company should be able to give you a quote over the phone. Buy your beware on this one. I definitely would not rely on, on that. I would always suggest to anyone uh, I mean, of course, COVID-19 is going on, but if you can meet with that person one-on-one -on -one to, to really dive out those questions and be through about it and then perhaps meet again and, and sort of get with your team just to, just to make sure that you're, you're, you're checking all the boxes and you're getting everything out of uh, what you intend to get out of it. But just getting on the phone and just having a good conversation, it sounds good. That's something that I would not do. So caution on that part. Next slide, Alex. Okay, we would dive into SEMA care a little bit, and I I felt it'd be better for for my guy, our VCIO, Mr. Alex Morrow, who can who this is what he he live in this space all day every day. So he's going to talk on the next few slides, and then I'll come back after after that. So Alex, you can take it from here. All right, very good. Thank you, AD. Yeah. So we'll talk a little bit, just kind of about. What is in um, our SEMA care services? And these are going to be, uh, you'll notice as you're looking at other MSPs out there and you're comparing your solutions, uh, some of these will match up, some of them won't. Uh, you'll see in some areas where we have more focus, uh, such as security, uh, things uh, such as our enterprise experience with backups and those kind of things, you'll see it's a little more. So this will at least give you kind of a good overview of, of what's included in our services and what we focus on. Um, so as you look out and, you know, to use a managed service provider that you can use these kind of a checkbox to look at uh, what's included. So uh, first, ma the managed IT, that's that's taking care of uh, and I'll and I'll go into more detail on these uh, each one, but you know that's taking care of the servers, your storage, your desktops, devices, network, uh, managing your security. That's your firewall. You know your email security, maybe password management, your antivirus, uh, performing security audits, those kind of things. Um, uh, backups in DR. That's making sure again that your data is being protected, uh, that we're putting it you know, in the cloud, that it's in multiple places, that it's encrypted and safe. And if something does happen, we have a recovery plan for that. Um, and then hybrid cloud or, or full cloud, that's really managing uh, your cloud solutions. So I'll kind of talk a little bit more in detail on each one of these. So 
what is managed services, right? What are those managed IT services? And it does include the uh, desktop support, right? Supporting your desktops, uh, making sure that they're up to date and all those things. Uh, that's that pat ma patch management, uh, managing your server, ensuring that your server is up to date, uh, any errors or issues with that are managed. Uh, same thing with your network, and that also includes your wireless uh, network, making sure that you have a good network connection and that that network is managed properly. Uh, let's say, you know, you have a different different departments in your organization. Are we properly segmenting those into different networks? Uh, the proactive maintenance is really like AD was talking about, really being not just reactive, but proactive in maintaining your systems. Uh, that's making sure that you're doing proactive scans. Uh, you're looking at those systems to ensure that there's any errors in the background. Uh, you may notice, especially with Windows, there are errors that happen in the background, but a lot of them don't pop up. Uh, so a, a proper proactive maintenance system will be monitoring those errors and will create tickets for those technicians to research those errors before they become a problem, right? It's uh, often if you wait for those issues to become a problem, they're, they either cause downtime or end up costing uh, more time and technician time to fix those issues. So being proactive is really important there. Of course, just your traditional help desk. I'm having trouble with this particular application uh, or line of business application, those kind of things. That's just your tradition, you know, your what you would expect help desk to be. Uh, your VoIP or your communication system. So that's managing your phone system. Uh, sometimes that's vendor management, depending on who you're using for that um, but you know that that's going to be included in those managed IT services um, managing your assets right so making sure that we know what you have where you have it what's the warranty when's the warranty going to expire do we need to renew the warranty and just keeping overall management of all your assets and then of course the virtual CIO strategic planning that's really you know a part where we shine that's the ability to really put the roadmap together discuss uh, the strategy of your IT management every single company and that kind of goes from a day AD was saying about getting a, a, a quote over the phone every company is different uh, and every company has a different roadmap for their IT strategy. Uh, different budgets, uh, different industries mean that not every company is going to be the same setup. So uh, having that consulting and that strategic planning is really important. Um, so managing your backup and disaster recovery, we have a whole slide on it because it is incredibly important, right? And this is the part when I, when I'm looking at some of those others, you know, hey, my my ne my nephew's really good at IT. Hey, uh, you know, we have uh, our office manager really knows computers and and there are IT. This is an area that we see uh, often gets overlooked, um, and that is the managing and monitoring of your backups, right? Um, the absolute worst time to find out that you uh, have a bad backup is at the time that uh, you need that backup. Uh, and so making sure that, that those backups are being monitored uh, for any failures and immediately uh, you know, having technicians work on that is important, um, as well as what happens, what is our plan if we do have an issue. Um, uh, if a server crashes or or if somehow a virus gets in there or something, what is our disaster recovery plan? Um, and that is that full disaster recovery as a service, what we call, um, and that's that full encompassing service of making sure that your we take ownership for your backups and we make sure that they do not fail and we test them. Right. Um, and then right on that is also data encryption, and that's making sure that your data is safe uh, from any potential threats, be it hackers or, you know, let's say you have a salesperson that has sensitive information on their laptop, um, making sure that that data where it needs to be encrypted, not all data needs to be encrypted, but where data needs to be encrypted, that it is encrypted. All right. And so for our security solutions, and, and, and this is really, you know, again, last week, I talked a lot about on, on security, so you know, feel free if you missed that one, feel free to go back uh, to the recording uh, for last week and spend some more more time on security. So I won't spend a ton of time here, but just to you know, kind of this is managing your firewall, uh, managing maybe your password management solution like we talked about LastPass, uh, intrusion detection, and and making sure that 
if there are attacks, that we know there are attacks, do we need to take action? Um, being aware that you're being attacked, a lot of just traditional firewalls out there and without that managed services, without an IT department monitoring that, uh, you could be uh, being attacked and not even know. Right, so it's incredibly important to know to get alerts if if we're starting to see some major attacks on your system, so that we can take uh, action to prevent that. Um, managing your email again, we talked a lot about you know making sure uh, that the way that we communicate, which very often is email or through Teams or something like that, is is secure. And so make, making sure that our email is secure is is very important. Um, also putting you know proper fish. Uh, phishing prevention in place, uh, those kind of things, just managing your overall email security, um, helping you with your IT uh, security policy, right? So all those policies we talked about, computer use policies, password policies, all those important policies um, that your IT department would come up with uh, is also something that's included in our managed security. Um, same thing with advanced content filtering, kind of goes with the firewall, making sure that we are uh, filtering for any malicious websites, uh, those kind of things. We do security audits as well, um, and that gives you a lot of information, you know, who has access to what, where might there be some holes, uh, what changed uh, since the last time we did an audit. Uh, there's that device encryption again, really talking about making sure that we have uh, data encrypted where encrypted where it needs to be. And then uh, compliance reporting, that's kind of like your HIPAA, your PCI, those kind of things. Making sure that we're checking those box that we're in, whatever compliance that we need to be in our industry. And then uh, managing the cloud is something that, you know, SEMA has been doing for, for many, many years. Uh, we were doing cloud before cloud was cool, right? <laughs> and um, and that is is... It, it may be sometimes it, uh, sometimes they make it sound simple. Oh, you just click this button and go to the cloud. But really managing those cloud resources is something that you want um, to be managing on a regular basis. Uh, it can very easily, you know, you turn these things on and then all of a sudden the cost gets out of control or something like that. You want to make sure that you have the right uh, solutions in place in your cloud and they be properly monitoring those. Uh, and then also keeping up with what the changes are to those cloud solutions. Um, all of these providers make changes upgrades improvements and ensuring that if you are in the cloud if you're if you have systems in the cloud that you're properly managing those as well uh, you know kind of going back to security is ensuring that those cloud solutions are secure uh, very often if you just turn those up by default uh, there will be holes in there that a hacker could take advantage of most of these cloud providers are well aware they say you know the first thing you should do is plug these holes um, but they give you those holes so that you can set up the environment. Uh, so we will we'll often see, you know, set up the environment and all of a sudden there's all these uh, security holes in those cloud solutions. So it's important to properly manage that um, and, and manage your licenses, manage that infrastructure in the cloud. And that is the main thing. So I think this is uh, back over to you, AD. Hey, let me unmute myself. Yeah. OK, thanks again for that, uh, Alex. Um, I mean, even though I hear time and time again, every time I hear you speak about things like that, it just I learned something uh, different from it. So <clears throat> definitely thank you. Thank you for it. It was kind of funny. You said we were doing cloud when cloud wasn't cool. Mm -hmm. So that's <laughs> well, yeah, uh, just some some facts about SEMA care. Um, basically, we give you <clears throat> a, a peace of mind with the monitoring, you know, 24 by 7. Uh, there's a reduction in costs, and like I mentioned earlier when I was showing you the, the diagram, you can focus on your business goals and, and let leave that IT uh, part to, to us. Um, we have a single point of contact, so it's not dialing multiple contacts or trying to figure out who the person to, to speak with. Uh, one thing is really good, because Alex did mention, mention that, prices can really creep up on you if you don't be careful and you're uh, of who you're working with because um, things can nickel and dime you almost like a bad mechanic you know this breaks this break this happens and all of a sudden you a uh, uh, hundred dollar charge becomes six hundred dollars you're trying to figure out what happened there so when I mentioned predictable monthly fee uh, there's a flat Fee that's just charging and now you can budget in the future and then you know what you what you would be paying every month uh, with no hidden costs behind that. 
and um, Alex talked on uh, security last week. He mentioned again today uh, where you can increase your security and reduce your vulnerability that, that's out there. Uh, proactive management and establish service level agreements. Uh, also, you have access to highly skilled technical resources. Um, I'm having a, a good MSP would have those resources in place and have those technicians ready to go who can answer your question uh, pretty much on 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 every level. So uh, that's something just just something some things you need to keep in mind there. Alice, can you go to uh, next slide? OK, uh, this is a good one. I want to just speak on selecting an MSP, a managed service uh, provider and, and spend a little time uh, on some questions that you need uh, pretty much keep in mind and just have ready. Uh, next slide, Alex. So th this is what I call my must ask list uh, when you're looking at an MSP, uh, regardless of who they are or, or what you're talking about. These are things that you just need to be aware of. Uh, things such as do they answer the uh, phone live or if not, do, you, uh, do they return your call right away? Uh, is there something written in place based on their uh, their response time? So pretty much holding their feet to the fire. Uh, do they take their time uh, explaining things in your language? And I say that because there are a lot of smart technical people. They can be so smart, almost make you feel silly when they're explaining things to you. But sometimes I like people to explain things to me as, as if I'm a third grader. So in simple terms, so where I can process it and digest it and go back to it and explain to my boss, okay, this is what they're what what, what this is what they're actually saying, you know. So uh, just assuring that because something it doesn't matter how much you know if you can't break that down to where others can explain can understand uh, what you're saying. Um, being proactive, do they consistently? offer new ways to improve your system performance, not waiting to be reactive, but bringing things and ideas and thoughts and uh, discoveries before you. Uh, provide detailed voices, clearly explaining what you're paying for. So we've seen that a lot. You get this long receipt. I'm just saying typical in any store or anywhere. And and you you're like, OK, I thought this was like $49.99. Now all of a sudden you're paying $85. You're trying to figure out what this and what that is for. And then you got that fine print saying this or that. So being detailed to where you can understand that is incredibly, incredibly important. So that's something I would not take lightly because the bottom line, spending uh it, it's all of is all of our concerns at this point in time. Uh, what about guaranteed com to complete projects on time? And not just on time, on budget. So that's self-explanatory uh, right there. Um, and you want to know, do they monitor, remotely monitor your network 24 by 7, 365? Um, and you, you, another question would be, hey, do you offer re weekly reports on everything you've done, all your updates, all your patches, all your status of every machine on your network? So that's just not just depending on them to do their do the job, but also holding the feet to the fire, like I said again. So you have something before you explaining or detailing what has been done. Uh, network documentation, detailing the software licenses, critical passwords, user information, hardware inventory. So again, that's just being diligent and, and just checking to make sure everything is, is being covered and not just giving them the keys to the kingdom, but also having a spare key in case something goes wrong so you're not just left out in the dark. Uh, next slide. Uh, some other questions, some things might come up. Uh, is there other technicians or staff available uh, that's familiar uh, with your network? So that's standing away from that, that person who works alone or just one or two people. That's something you want to be concerned about as well because if that person going on vacation, Get, becomes ill, anything comes up, you want to make sure that uh, there's someone else around that's familiar when you need them so you don't have to start back from square one, uh, tell them about what's going on with your system. So that, that's important. 
monitoring an on-site an off-site as well as an on-site backup so and you know we know how incredibly important uh, backups are uh, doing periodic test restores on your backups to avoid corruptions so this is simply uh, testing your backups to ensure that when you need them you have them and uh, ensuring that that it will restore properly in the case of a natural in case of a major disaster that comes up um, backing up uh, you want to ask do you back up your network before performing upgrades and and working on major projects that involve changes because you want to have something to fall back on in case something doesn't happen right uh, another question would be um, you want to plan in case of a major disaster and things you want to know how fast can we be restored if this can come up because that's important if someone say hey it's going to take you know two to three to oh, however long i mean that's not going to work for your business you want to know can i be up in hours can i how long would it actually take that's a discussion you want to have uh will you be able to work remotely in case of a disaster like that so um, obviously, that's what we're doing now, but you want to make sure in, in case all this fails and you can't work at your at your place, at your office space or wherever, can you uh, be dispatched remotely and continue to work uh, uninterrupted, so to speak. And lastly, I want to speak on your technicians, which is they do the heavy lifting. It's almost like the lifeblood lifeline for any MSP. So. Um, and those technicians, do, do they keep up with their certifications? Is there ongoing uh, training involved there? These are questions that you want, you don't want to be afraid to ask and just be upfront. Are you, are they continue to be in proactive in their education? Um, and what about, are they familiar with your, you, with your un, unique line of business applications, not just technically, uh, savvy but understanding why you are biz why why you are in business and why what what your applications do so they can sort of uh support you more efficiently and this is a good one um owning owning the problem when something goes wrong i mean you know and i love when someone would tell me or come to me and say we are going to fix it or use the words like our or it's pretty much like we are involved it's not your problem it's our problem because that's why we in work i mean that's why we in business because uh we don't rest until um, that problem becomes a, a solution so that's just thing to be aware of can you go to the next slide <laughs> I, I kind of played with this one a little bit and I call it run far as run, but these are things that, you know, just doing your homework that you just need to be aware of. Uh, if they have no references or no real true testimonies and uh, things that they can fall back on, um, be careful with that. Uh, if someone works alone with, with no backup, I mean, you that's self-explanatory as well, but basically some one person goes away for some time and that's your backup person. I mean, that's the person that you rely on. You don't have them and guess what, what happens with that? Um, no response system. So nothing in place that holds their feet to the fire. They won't commit to anything. They give you times like I'll uh, be there around this time or uh, probably a prosper that that's those are not good answers to your question, especially when you need some help right now. Uh, they prefer verbal over written communication and no follow up behind that. So and it's easy for someone to tell you something and you don't have it in writing. And now uh, you said, but last Tuesday you said, then they say, no, I meant this day or that day. So it's just good to have just to have those things in place. Uh, no office instead uses a PO box and have a cell phone. You know, we know how those fly by uh, operations work. Uh, a PO box, you can pretty much be anywhere. So just having a, an office space, it gives you another sense of security. Um, so if someone's hard to contact uh, and you have to call them continuously, you have to follow up with them when they say they will follow up with you as well as they show up late, that's another telltale sign. Um, no communication unless you call with a problem. A good MSP should be checking in with you, have some established uh, quarterly meetings, and also when there when there are things that they discover, they update you on it without you having to come and come. That's being reactive and and 
that would catch up with, with any person. I mean, with any business in, in place, if you're just waiting for, for a problem to, to come up. And lastly, has no policies or procedure for resol re resolving problems. So that's just that's just uh, checking those um, uh, checking things off to ensure that those things are being uh, taken care of. So uh, we know we've given you a lot, but these are things that are critical when it comes to if you ever come to the point where this is something that you want to uh, to look into. Next slide, Alex. So, uh, I'm sorry. So here you have it. Here we pretty much cover all the basics. Here we talked about we talked about a lot, and basically a good MSP will support your entire organization uh, remotely. <clears throat> um, a good one would also have state-of-the-art trouble ticketing system, which means that you call a number. Uh, your 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 problem is 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 entered in, into the the system, and there's a real follow up in place. Uh, remote desktop sharing the systems. I really love this one, and this is a must. I had a problem with my own uh, desktop uh, two weeks ago, and I had to <laughs> had to pretty much test out our own system, and I did. I, I put in a ticket. I uh, got a follow up about 15 minutes or less. He said, hey, let me take over and 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 pretty much do the driving for it for me. And pretty, pretty much took care of it in, in five minutes or less. So it, and I don't I do have technical uh, technical knowledge, but I'm not real deep at times. So it's just good to have be able to make one call or put in a trouble ticket and it's taken care of like that. Uh, on-site on -site support as needed, and that's exactly that, as needed, when you need someone to come on site and sort of um, uh, either talk to everyone or get everyone at the same time when they have team meetings or or pretty much look at the overall systems in, in, in place. And and pretty much having a complete network administration that, that's in place, and that's basically what it is why uh, MSP is in place to cover all that. So. Um, those are things that you just kind of sort of need to be aware of as, as well. Uh, Alice, can you go to the next slide? Okay, so, and I was just saying, this has been a lot. I know we it's a lot of terminologies, a lot of acronyms. It's been a lot of things said, and sometimes that can go in one ear, not the other, because, I mean, it's impossible to sort of retain all of this information at once. But again, this is just information to have information to come back on. And at any point, if anyone is interested uh, in being more detailed or focusing in the area, that's why we're here. Come talk to us. Uh, we're not at all trying to sell you anything. This is more of giving you information to start some dialogue because it's, it's some really good MSPs out there and some, some horrible ones that are out there that I would say buy your beware. So just, just be aware um, of those things and 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 like I said, at any point in time, just just contact and let us know uh, if you want to have some more dialogue about about interesting. At this time, I'll open it up for Q and A. Uh, Michaela, do you have any questions uh, out there? So far, nope. It looks like you guys covered it all very well. Okay. Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll I'll jump in here real quick for just a second, kind of to. to just tag on what AD is saying about, you know, a wide variety of MSPs out there. The the thing is the the IT industry is not regulated in any in any way of any kind. Uh, so anybody who lost their job or who 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 just, you know, decided one day they wanted to be an IT person can spin up a website and say, I'm an IT person. I'm an MSP. I bought some tools. I did whatever. Um, and so that's why a lot of these questions that, that we put up here are really important to ask because they filter out a lot of those folks that really haven't established themselves. Um, they may be like a one man show just trying to figure it out. And, and you know, often uh, often those are maybe only around for a little while. And, and then and, and then often, you know, I've also seen some uh, MSPs do some pretty crazy things as far as, you know, I even saw one company 
uh, out of Frisco actually sabotage a company to try to make it look like they needed to hire them. Uh, so there's some dishonest people out there, and there are some people that really shouldn't be in business. So it's important to ask those questions and really, really dive into who they are as a company and, and can they truly support you. So just want a little comment on that. <laughs> oh, that was that was great, Alex. I think you hit the nail on the head. Um, you know, again, you know, thank thank John and, and your team for coming together and putting this together. And sometimes we don't know what we don't know. You know, when we hear backup and VPN and, t- you know, Zoom and all this stuff just because of the, <laughs> uh, you know, pandemic, you know, we were forced into this, you know, kind of thing. And, and, and a lot of companies may not was ready. But, you know, before you make an educated uh, purchase or anything, you want to look it up. You know, you can't, the, the bad thing, you just can't go to uh, Yahoo and pull up MSP because you're going to get a whole lot of, but you got to understand what you're looking for. Just like when you're buying a car, you know, how big, model, everything, you want to make sure it fits for you. So again, you know, thank you guys for walking us, you know, these past four Wednesdays through a lot of this information. And again, you know, not charging us and and I thank John for some free services he, he was providing for and still providing. Uh, and, and sometimes that, that servant leadership is there. You know, sometimes you got to give before you receive. And uh, we want it there. But again, at, at the council, we want to make sure, you know, that our suppliers, our corporate members, uh, they have the opportunity to understand this, you know, understand what they're looking for. So we kind of walked you from playing with Zoom all the way to a managed provider. So we just wanted to give you some information to go on. John Alday, AD, and his team and the team, they're available for you. You know, we're not saying that that we're not saying that you have to go to SEMA, but you know, there's some other look out there. And again, AD brought up some great questions. Make sure you check off the box. Make sure you know what their response time is, how long it's going to take you to do that. Do they have a way you can send an email to them? Can they remote in and fix your computer? Because time is money and money is time. And and you know, these next these these upcoming, you know, ways we're going to have either so so again uh thank you for for all you do uh ad or john any closing words well i I would like to say um we will be sending out a survey uh please take a please help us out this is how you can help us as well and and give us a very upfront truthful feedback that would help us uh get better do better and also to understand it from your perspective there's things that we can miss things that we that we probably could have uh, that's more important to you that we didn't speak on so uh just be open and honest and give us that feedback and we're greatly greatly appreciate it my information is there there's my uh email as well as my my contact information so do not be shy about contacting me and i would definitely get back with you and like i said if you want a one-on-one uh consultation we'd be we'd be more than more than happy to do that because like i said there was so much information that we've shared over the last four weeks that uh that you know you just like andrew said and i've said before we just don't know what we don't know so we'd be glad to to dive into that a little deeper i would ask my boss lastly mr john Alday, do you have any closing comments no, just uh, again, thanks everyone for your time uh, on this. And uh, I don't know why AD put a picture of Rice baseball players up there when you know, <laughs> great I, I was about that. I was gonna, three I was hours play. down at University of Texas. I know LSU. I guess LSU has a really good football, a baseball team as well, but I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thank you all, everyone. AD, thank you, Alex, Michaela on the SEMA team. Thank you for everything you did. And, and Andrew, of course, thank you for um, no, helping. Thank you, John. So. Thank you, John, for doing all the hard, you know, the heavy lifting and providing your time. I know you could have been doing 10,000 things other, but, you know, I can always say you've always watched out for the council. So thank you. You bet. And uh, one last plug on Fridays, and, and Andrew got a little one on one on this, but <laughs> if you ever want to just kind of get on and you know, see how Microsoft Teams or anything's working, you know, just, uh, you know, there's this link that uh, um, Michaela sends out, uh, you know, for our little Teams training, but we can train in pretty much on anything. You know, well, not on anything, but you know, <laughs> IT related, whatever. I can get you there. So, all right. Thank all you all. All right. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, everyone. Uh, all right.